Hello, thanks for tuning in. It's Stuart, the Unrepented Atheist. I'm looking at the latest edition of the line from uh, the 1st of May 2024. Rem is calling in. I believe that he's a theistic Buddhist. I've made a few notes here. I've got a timestamp because I listened to it uh, uh, yesterday. And I've just written down here, one hour, 20 minutes. And I've just written the words W O O. Wonder why I wrote that. Okay, let's have a listen and try to find out. Particular Buddhist tradition, I would want to know why. And then I would want to know how we can know that there's anything true in it. And so you're making a bunch of statements um, that that don't agree with my understanding of the world. Like my understanding of the world is that there's no evidence that reincarnation occurs, that you're going to have an afterlife, that you're going to have some other life. Um, and so <clears throat> when I hear somebody say, ah, you'll, you'll be reincarnated, but you won't know it. So first of all, not only is that, um, as you noted, potentially unfalsifiable, but it is, there's another word for that, which is bullshit. Because if I won't remember it, then I'm not me. The, the <clears throat> fundamental things that make me me are this specific conscious awareness and the collection of memories and desires and all of that. If, if I get... I absolutely 100% agree. And that is why when Buddhists and Wu peddlers come to me, tell me that the universe is conscious and that consciousness is what the universe does um, through us. And that when the physical body dies, this uh, I don't know, this whisper of consciousness, this breath of consciousness, goes back uh, somewhere, and then is kind of reborn in another body. But you've got no memories. You've got absolutely there's, there's no trace of like the original me. Only this breath of consciousness, which goes somewhere and then is reborn in another body, because apparently that's what that's what the universe does. Well. I mean, to me, that is absolute death because what I identify with myself is all my memories and my history and all my <clears throat> experiences. And if I'm going to be born in another body uh, by this means and I don't remember anything, then I will, to all intents and purposes, just cease to exist. It's, first of all, it's meaningless. It's meaningless to say that it's a meaningless kind of grasping for some kind of afterlife. Humans are always looking for some way to survive death. I mean, for goodness sake, you get 70, 80 years on this planet. Isn't that long enough? Why do you need the whole of eternity? Why do you have to keep clinging on by either some uh, pathetic promise of heaven and an afterlife in Christianity or woo peddlers are telling us that we're going to be reincarnated, but we won't know it. I absolutely agree with Matt. The death of all my memories and the death of all my experiences in this form will be the death of me. Even if there is some uh, breath of life that goes on, it's completely meaningless. For me, that will be absolute death. Hit on the head, and it completely changed my personality and wiped my memory. I would still be the same physical entity, but I wouldn't be the same person. But even to whatever extent we could say that that was the same person, because all the physical things are, are done. If you were to take my pattern and I don't, move it up, I guess, is, is how you were suggesting. There's no mechanism for that. There's no way to demonstrate that it occurs, that it has ever occurred. There's no way to demonstrate who's enlightened and who's not. And so it seems to me... This is the one of the most laughable things. And I admit, I bought into this myself at one time in the 90s. I went to India. I did the whole trip. I was crazy with it. And I sat and listened to esoteric conversations about becoming one with the existence and all that stuff. And I realized I had to leave it all behind uh, because it's irrational. There's no evidence for it. And so all these claims for reincarnation and particularly enlightenment. I mean, how do you test for enlightenment? There are people right now who are going along, who are going around with blissful, uh, knowing smiles on their faces, believing that they're enlightened because they've meditated. They've had nirvana. They've had a Satori, uh, they've found Moksha or whatever. There are people who actually believe that they're enlightened, but they can't demonstrate uh, what it is. How do you test for it? How do you know you're enlightened? There are people who think they're enlightened and there are people who know them and don't believe that they're enlightened.
for one reason or another. It's um, it's a world full of claims which can't be demonstrated, and that's one of the reasons why I left it behind. I became an atheist, and I decided to empty my mind of all those uh, claims that could not be dem that couldn't be demonstrated with any kind of uh, proper evidence. And this is not a slam on you, but it seems to me every time I hear this that what's happened is there are people who really like the idea of connectedness and feeling <laughs> spiritual and having guidance from <clears throat> gurus of some sort. And because they don't know and understand these things and they don't have a good model of how this works, they're willing to go with anybody else's model as long as it feels okay and doesn't seem to be doing harm and if they feel like they're learning something and the problem with that is that you could learn something from anyone but all of these religious ideas come with good ideas that are towing on a, a truckload of harmful negative shit and so rather than say oh i'm a buddhist um and I believe in this, this, and this. And then when somebody says, how do you know any of that's true? You're stuck. Why not just say, I'm, I'm a secularist, but I do like some things. Yeah, well, if you ask them, <clears throat> how do you know it's true? Or if you say to somebody who claims to be enlightened, how do you know you're enlightened? They'll just say, when you know, you know. And then they'll say something like, a guru once said <clears throat> that <clears throat> enlightenment is no big deal. It's very, very close to every single person. It's sitting so close that you can't see it, like on the bridge of your nose. You will hear something like that, that kind of esoteric talk, which sounds convincing if you're in a certain mind state and you want to, you're looking for some kind of comfort, you're looking for some kind of direction and purpose. You're looking for somebody who's probably um, sounds smarter than you are and has got their shit together, as it were, and you might be persuaded to believe it. But... It amounts to absolutely nothing. From Buddhism and from <clears throat> I Ching and from Christianity and from Scientology. Well, I'm probably not anything from Scientology, but um, <laughs> it's it, it, that would that would seem to me to be preferable to 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 actually publicly saying I believe things that I can't demonstrate that I have a good reason to believe. I I agree actually. Um, yeah, you might you might have just uh, converted me to uh, a secular uh, Buddhist. Cause, yeah. yeah, well, that was good. Um, that was quite a good breakdown by Matt and a very good characterization of uh, why people are sort of lulled into this mind state where they will accept these claims. But he's come back and he said he's a, he he agrees. Fantastic. Yeah, there's a number of uh, you know systems in Buddhism that, you know, I totally agree with, but yeah, the unfalsifiable stuff, you know, I've, I've always been on the fence about it, you know, like, yeah, reincarnation, although there is a way to falsify that, like, you know, I've never really, you know, heard of anyone, at least that I know that has uh, displayed that, and um, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the whole God thing, like, you know, yeah, being a God and all this, stuff, yeah, I, I, I don't know about that, but yeah, right. thanks for Ram, your input. It it's well, you... really difficult to know how you would confirm reincarnation. I suppose that uh, if somebody uh, claimed to be Ju Julius Caesar, for example, he reincarnated from Julius Caesar and by some amazing uh, chance had retained all the memories and said, well, I can prove it. And I don't know, by some means could um, prove it. That would be interesting. Um, but that never really seems that never happens. We've, we've never seen anything remotely like that. You managed Ram to get 50 bucks out of me. I'll let Daryl finish this one up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's enough. I think that uh, I understand now why I wrote Wu. The call, uh, I did find it good, mainly because of the way that Matt characterized and broke down that whole, uh, you know, the whole kind of connectedness and, uh, you know, the universe is one, the universe is conscious. Uh, there is no death, we journey on, all that kind of stuff, is basically because it makes people feel good, even though there's no good reason to believe it. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.